What is up, River family? It is Wednesday, which means it's our Wednesday Bible study. Here's why we do this. We want to grow together right where we are. So we hope that this encourages you. We hope it inspires you. So let's dive into his word. What is up, everybody? This is, it's Wednesday, and obviously things look a little bit different because we are going to change it up. Uh, If you've been joining us on Wednesdays, we've been doing a Wednesday Bible study which has been awesome and we, we really wanted to change it up and every once in a while just kind of have a discussion about um, maybe things that are going on in the culture or maybe things that we face uh, just as people. So today we're actually going to have a conversation about parenting and I'm excited for who we have. We have our youth pastor Naomi, we have our outreach pastor Tori, and then everybody knows Stephanie, the church secretary. If you've seen any announce or, or 90% of our announcement videos, uh, nobody actually even just calls her Stephanie anymore. It's Stephanie, the church secretary, as if it's all one name. So, hey, so we're going to excited. We're going to talk about parenting and hosting our conversation is going to be Pastor Naomi. I'm the hostess with the Moses, just in case you're very <laughs> curious. But I think it's fun to do this. That way I can I get some sneak peeks and some secrets and some pro tips and just put them in my pocket for later. Or I'll use them on your kiddo. So you'll you'll see them maybe. Uh, but just to start it off, let's start real, let's just start real simple. Um, what's the best thing about parenting? I'll go right off the bat. Um, <laughs> so I've got, if you, if you know me or maybe you don't, I've got two kids. One is 47 months and the other one is two. That's almost four. Bradley turns four next month. Um, but one of my favorite things, uh, really with the oldest one, is just the time that we can wrestle around and, uh, and just, you know, kind of have a lot of fun. But with the, with the youngest one, it's uh, lunch. I like going home and taking naps with my kid at lunch even though he only lets me sleep for about 20 seconds until he gets uncomfortable. <laughs> but that's one of my favorite things. It's just like wrestling with the oldest and uh, taking naps with the youngest. But that's about all he can do anyways. Um, okay, I've got Emma who is 17 and Ellie who is 14. And the best thing I think is seeing their victories. Like no matter oh, great big victory, little teeny tiny victory passing the test and seeing their excitement and knowing like what all they did to get to that victory and stuff. I, that's that's a big thing for me is just being like, able to, to to see them succeed in no matter what it is. Seeing them like grow and mature, becoming like a functional human of society. <laughs> being good people. Good people. Yeah, that's cool. People. That's cool. So I have Brayden and Brayden's 20 and then I have Landon. Landon is 15 and then Lexi is 13. So I would say the best thing about parenting is when they're little. <laughs> no I mean it really is awesome I just think back of, like sleeping with my kids like you're talking about just like or when they would fall asleep like I wouldn't really sleep with them and they'd fall asleep in your arms like I think about that I see pictures and I'm like oh my gosh I didn't know what I had when I had them in my arms oh, wow. and but really it's awesome now because Lexi is kind of like my best friend and you took her away to camp for yeah. a week and I was like <laughs> Where's my bestie? Aww. So um, I just love enjoying life with like just doing things that they love to do. Mm-hmm. Just kind of like she's saying, celebrating their victories, just getting to do their own interests and just seeing them smile just brings you so much oh, joy. Yeah, it's so good. That made me think of what Caitlin said. We had that Mother's Day video where we did like pro tips and like kind of goofy tips. And I remember one of her advice were like, um, don't feel bad. Like if there's dishes and laundry do, and like you're just holding your little one, like don't feel bad for holding your little one because like they're only little for so long. Yes. Little for a little. I thought you were wrong. Little for a little bit. Because Bradley oh. usually when he's quiet, there's something wrong. There. That's, <laughs> the worst, he's like, that's the worst thing about parents. He's hiding stuff <laughs> or destroying something, or you know. What I mean? Okay, so that being said, what's like something really challenging? Or, I don't want to say the worst part, but like what's something that's like it's a big challenge, it's an obstacle about parenting. For me, it's like regression. Like I know so they're, they're, it's really tough, right? If you know me, I'm a super goal-oriented potty person. Training. It's potty, I, I said this, if it came to leading through a pandemic, and I'm not wishing the pandemic on anybody, <laughs> don't hear what I'm not saying, but if it came to leading through a pandemic or potty training, I'm choosing the pandemic 100% of the time. Like potty training was so hard, but even the, I think the hardest thing that we went through, um, just, and it's just here recently, was, you know, before pre-Juju, uh, Bradley was potty trained. Like, he didn't have to worry about it. He wasn't going to have an accident uh-huh. in bed. If he did, so he was sick. You know what I mean? Like, he knew something was up. And then, all of a sudden, you have a baby, and it's like, it doesn't matter if he's, like, sleeping in the bathroom. He's going to have an accident. Oh. To me, that was the, for me, just mentally, because it's like, I know what you're capable of. You've actually already shown me that you're capable of doing it. 
to me, that was the hardest. Like, and I, that he's he's four. I can't even wait till he's a teenager. Yeah, I'm gonna take you back off that. So I'm gonna say regression too, but with a twenty year old. Oh yeah. So like, <laughs> <laughs> like just being real honest, like you know what they can do. They've been doing the right things, and all of a sudden they just like go way back to little kids and like act crazy. I'm gonna say crazy is the best word for crazy. it. But yeah. I, I like you watch your kids and they make these choices, and you're like. I know I taught them this. I know I trained them this way. And you just have, like you said, I trained my child to go to the bathroom. I know I taught him this. And so just like a teenager, I know I taught him all these things, but it's like, he, they still make their own choices. And so many times, like as your kids are getting older, you're like, man, I wish you would just do this and life would be easier for you, you know? And I think about God and like, does he look at us and think the same thing? Like, oh my gosh. Oh, man, oh, we worry like if you that. would just do this. Life would be so much easier for you, but I'm like, no, God, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it this way. And that's how it is with my oldest. He's like, no, Mom, I want to do this, and I don't want to do that. And he does it his way. And I just sit back all the time, and I'm like, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> that's, that's it. That I, and I'm going to piggyback off of that because I was like, what is the worst thing about parenting? But, and I have two girls, so you think drama and stuff, but there's really – there's not a lot of drama, but it's that, that – them making their own decisions and you're like, you don't do that. Like, and it's not bad, bad decisions, but you're, it, it's not how you would pick it. It's yeah. not what you would do. And so letting them just walk out and that, and you're just like having to like bite their tongue, bite your tongue and not say anything. And then when you put it that way, when you're like, God's going, Steph, Stephanie, the church secretary, <laughs> do you think you should be? And it's like, <laughs> oh, I, it like totally changed it for me now watching them do that. It's like, okay, I guess. What would God say for me? I should say that same thing for them. So yeah. growing up, like so, my parents, I, I grew up with like really good parents, right? And uh, I was a straight A student going through school, and I remember in high school I got like an eighty nine, and my parents grounded me. So I was like, "Are you, are you kidding me?" You know what I mean? Like I, 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 so I had this conversation with my mom. I remember having, I said, "Mom, um, there, I have friends that are making like seventy twos, and their parents are letting them go to the movies like every Friday, and I can't even lead that. Like I can read a book. That's all I can do." Why am I getting grounded for an 89? And this was her response. Uh, she said, because all through elementary and middle school, you showed me that you were a straight A student. So right now you're showing me that you've actually like settled or you're, you're being lazy. You showed me what you're capable of. And now you're showing me that you're not living up to even the, what you, where you set the bar. And I'm like, I shot myself. I should have got seasoned. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. Watching this, yeah. don't shoot the yeah, bar don't low. Yeah, don't shoot like, the bar still, low. Yeah, there's some fourth like, graders that are pretty smart like that. <laughs> yeah. So, like when it comes to like raising Bradley and Julius, I think that's why regression is so hard for me. Is because like I see Brad. Bradley is so smart. Like he's so smart. He's super strong. You know what I mean? And and the kid's a negotiator. Like if you've spent any time with him, but to see what he's capable of. And to see him, yeah. like, the moments where he settles. And there's times where Alexis has called me out. And, like, because he'll act like a six-year-old or a seven-year-old. And he'll do something four-year-old, like a four-year-old would do. And I get so mad. And Alexis is like, Matt, he's four. I'm like, but he acts this way. I used, to do that. <laughs> I used to do that with Emma. I'd be like, why is she acting like this? And then would be like, oh, she's two. <laughs> that's the reason. But they act older. And I don't know if that's a firstborn, if you had that. Yeah, with, uh, with Brady. Yeah. But Emma acted so much more mature than her age, and so it's like you you just start treating them older and older and older. And so, does that ever stop? Like, do you treat no. him older than what he sh what his actual age is? No, I think you do. Like, I'm a firstborn born too, and so yeah, I think yeah, it's baby. always like that. But so my husband's a baby, <laughs> so my husband's like, you need to do this and this, and then as a firstborn, all that pressure, I'm like. Let's, let's lay off him. Let's lay off Because I remember the pressure. Like your parents are like expecting you to be an adult and you're actually a child and they're expecting you to run the house and take care of everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of, for me, it's kind of like I see how my husband's like, you need to do this. And I'm like, well, let's. And then I'm like, yes, you do. You know, it's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Is, cut that cut. is Luke the youngest in his? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So we were all just the youngest and then trying to figure out, like, yeah. how to <laughs> marriage and parent. <laughs> that was like, yeah. <laughs> that was okay. So that's interesting to go into. Let's talk about your first born. And, like, it's your first kid. You're here with your spouse. And, then, like, there's this whole new world in front of you. What was that like for you and your spouse going into parenting together? Can uh, I say this? I don't know if I can say this. 
we totally screwed up. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yes. Yes. which is what we did. We were like, okay, we didn't have this and this and this and this. So we gave Brayden everything. And then I remember whenever he was like seven, we were like, we have nothing cool left big to buy him. We bought him everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were like, we have like messed up. We gave him so much. Mm -hmm. And so like we had just an incident that happened with us and we, we realized like when you give people, they just expect more. And mm -hmm. so we were like, we've got to quit doing this with our son. Like we're making a little, you know, a little bad guy. I mean, he wasn't, but we were doing this. Like we were trying to You create to a it. culture, right? Yeah. That's what we noticed a lot with Bradley. So this year at Christmas, everything at Bradley was like, oh, so we're going to grandma's for Christmas so they can give me presents? Yeah. Like, no, no, no. So <laughs> first of all, Christmas is about Jesus, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. but, like, but you create that culture, you know? And it's because you want to bless them and you want to give them. And ah, man, that's the thing that's the whole, I think that's why maybe firstborns struggle with discipline is because we bless, 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 bless. And when we discipline, it's like, you hate me. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> I don't. The Bible says I love you when I do that. You know what I mean? Like, I think um, the, what I learned, so somebody told me this. It was the best uh, parenting advice ever. They said, everybody's going to give you parenting advice and it's all going to be bad. Yes. And I think it was yes. so true because everybody wants really? to come in. Yes. And I and I catch myself with like, you know, my sister in law just had a baby and I'm like, Oh yeah, you wanna do this, you wanna do this, you wanna do this. <laughs> and and the scripture that comes to mind is like raise your child up in the way that they should go. Yeah. Right? Well the only person that's gonna know the way that they should go is the one that spends the most time with them. <laughs> you know, so everybody um, we got so much flack for keeping uh, Bradley on a schedule and doing things a certain way, but that's the way like that soothed him. And that was the way that mm -hmm. he enjoyed it. That's what brought him peace. That's what brought him comfort. So what worked for, and we're learning this with the second board is what worked for Bradley is completely useless mm -hmm. with Julius. Yes. You know what I mean? So I think um, when it comes to like firstborns, it was like, it was, Hey, like figure out what works for them. You know, spend time with them. Not everybody's advice. Somebody's going to give you a nugget that's going to be good. I'm not saying, listen, if anybody gives you advice, just listen, say yes, ma'am, and walk away. There's something, you know, try it out. But ultimately, trust trust what God's put inside of you. I think that's the hard part. You're like, mm -hmm. God just put responsibility of another life. Like for us, we started with a dog. And we thought if we could keep a dog alive, maybe we could do a human. You know I mean? For real. <laughs> like that was, our, that was our legit conversation. A dog's still alive, if anybody's wondering. But, you know, <laughs> But like, you know, take the time to get to know your kid. Okay. Try stuff out. I mean, don't ignore it. I think it's it's ignorant to ignore advice. Try it out, but be willing to discard what doesn't work and to learn and adapt to what might get to know your kid. God bless you with them. Mm -hmm. you know we did. Mean? Like my deal is though, that first month that the baby is alive. If and this sounds terrible, but if you don't contemplate divorce with your spouse, you're doing something wrong. Because like we about had a knockdown drag out when Walmart self check. It was the Walmart self checkout had just started, and we had a one month old with us. We were trying to check out real like we were trying to check out, and there was a line behind us. So I was like, Dust, we need to hurry. Like we're taking too long. We need to hurry. And outside, we I found a parking spot and tried to pull pull in, or Dust tried to pull in, and this car swooped in. Well, that just made Dust super mad. Like he got out to go talk to that guy, and I was like, No, 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 newborn baby, come back. And you're just your your emotions. You're not yourself. Everything. You're not getting sleep. You're not. You're not eating. You're not. You're on a baby schedule, and that baby doesn't have a schedule. And so, like, if you're gonna have some battles with your spouse. That, but you've got to just get through those through those battles and through those fights that you normally would not have because your whole world is just it's a 180, a complete 180 from what do you what do you like say in your mind like okay, stop, like to get through those like oh, don't gosh. smother my husband with a pillow <laughs> in the middle of the night don't no no but it's just that everything and and I wrote this down everything is a season diapers are a season potty training is a season. The, the kids will go through this like trying to I think of that like give them a give them an inch they'll take a foot thing they'll try they'll do this line to see how far they can go but you've got to just I mean you just got to stop it but it's like everything literally is a season like teaching your child how to drive that that little bit that's awful putting them behind a wheel and you are sitting here and you at their hands yes <laughs> and I'm there now okay, and the first, and the first thing I told Emma which was the worst thing is you have the ability to kill every one of us in this vehicle. And it's stress. I know. Firstborn. I know. Hyper optimistic. I know. 
<laughs> but it's that you I, I'm trying to tell them like this is so serious but it's like everything is a season it, it really, really is and like you said something so long ago that I remember is that when they're like juniors and seniors that they they start it's like they just start becoming their own person and you start getting irritated and you said it was almost like God you know they they need to leave and this is a way for you to be able to like push them you should the leave yeah <laughs> you should yeah. but it's that because you just don't I'm in that spot where I just don't know how I'm gonna do when Emma's gone like because she's a senior this year and I'm like she's not gonna be here. But it's like she's becoming her own person, and I'm just like, okay, I'm excited for her to go. Like, it'll be, and not in a bad way, but it's like, I, I've remembered that since you said it, like, I swear, five years ago. So, and when they come back, so like, Brayden's here for a little bit, because he moves into his uh, apartment, mm -hmm. like, in a few weeks. Then you're just like, okay, get up, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. You make them do all stuff so they don't want to come home. Before we moved to Panhandle, I had to live a month with my with my parents, and because uh, they were, you know, Danny and Marva were getting the house ready out uh, over on the other side of town, and um, that one, I like, listen, mom, dad, I love you, but living with you was so hard because, like, uh, at that point, I had already been out on my own for five years. So yeah. five years, I had learned mm -hmm. to establish like my own ways kind of determine how I wanted to spend money, how I was going to like do, like spread out my time, you know, figure out how I wanted to do things. And when, when I came into mom and dad's house, it was like, listen, you're under my roof. You're going to live by my rules, which I now when people, when kids come home, they're like, oh, my parents drive me crazy. I'm like, you're under their roof. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then I was like, listen, I will go sleep though. in the dumpster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It was like, it was, it was rough. Um, going back to like what you talked about, like smothering your husband. Yes. One of the, so one of, don't do that. Yeah, let's don't. start there. Um, one of the things that was new for us is I've never held a baby like before Brad, before Bradley. I never changed the diaper. Yeah, so I, and I was like, poop, no, poop, give me get away. You know what I mean? But like uh, Alexis has helped. She's been more involved. Wait, let's babies. go back to you changing diapers. How did you change diapers? Oh my gosh! Okay, when you so first had, let's this tell is the, you're gonna go there. Um, so. This was my, uh, when it, when I first came to changing diapers, Alexis still gives me crap for this all the time. Ironically, we're talking about changing diapers. Crap. Anyways, um, <laughs> I, I would wear latex gloves like Every when time. I changed the diaper because I was like, what happens if I get poop on my finger and I get an itchy eye and then I get, there's pink eye. There it is. And everybody's sick. Wash your hands. I, yeah, that was the way that I said. You're going to be a great parent. Right here. So, <laughs> Double it back around. Um, Alexis, Thank like, helps. Sure. yeah, don't judge me. I don't use latex gloves. I've grown up. Um, they are in the nursery rooms. If anybody else has <laughs> yeah. that scared and wants to volunteer for nursery, um, we have latex gloves. <laughs> so one of the things that happened with me and Alexis was she grew up, like, helping. Uh, she's, she's helped with babies. She's changed diapers and all this other stuff. So I remember one day, like, I was changing Bradley's diaper, and she's, like, hovering over my shoulder. Like making sure and like kind of barking at me and I'm like, hey babe, like it was it was kind of one of those boundary conversations. Like, hey, I love you, and I know you're you're kind of here to make sure I'm doing it. But when you hover over me, mm -hmm. you make me feel insufficient. Oh, oh I wonder. Uh, I wonder uh, if that's how kids feel with parents. I think that's exactly yeah. what it is. Oh, you know what I mean? But that was a hard conversation. That was so bad. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I hover over my kids. And, and after we had that, Alexis was like, I, I never even I never even thought about that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, every in every marriage, maybe you both of you coming into it, maybe neither one of you have changed the diaper. So the whole experience is like you're wearing a football helmet and shoulder pads and trying to. You should you know, wear those if you have a boy. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have girls, so, yeah. Or, 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 we'll go real fast. Or, okay. you know, yeah, I've heard that. Like, <laughs> the, the biggest thing I would say, like, especially it, with newly, like, new, is give each other grace. Like, mm -hmm. your experience, and this is marriage counseling, period. Your experiences are different than the person, than your spouse's. Maybe you had were involved with kids. Maybe you weren't. Maybe neither one of you were, and you're trying to figure it out together. The, the essential thing is get on the same page, communicate, and work together. That's it. Parenting, it, it's funny that, like, you know, uh, it takes two of us. It takes me and Alexis. Yeah. Uh, I found out that with the boys, I'm like, I think there's a thing with grace and truth. So with Bradley, I'm like, I'm super like, no son, you don't do this. And Alexis is like super gracious. And I think it's flip flop. Like if, if we were to have girls, I think I would be super gracious and Alexis would be super truthful. That's me and Luke. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, you're a girl mom, you're a boy mom, yeah. or you're a boy dad. And then you're both, you got both. So I was curious as to. 
Just Thoughts even said we had two girls. I wanted girls though. Like I've always wanted girls, and and that's what we have. And then besides Naomi being my other daughter right. and Dawson being exactly. my other son, I got a lot of kids yes. at this church. <laughs> but does said he even said he goes if we would have had boys because I think every guy like wants boys like that whole passing, yes all that stuff. But he goes I would have been too hard on boys than he was with girls. And, and that's just, he, he admitted that. And so I'm just like, and to me, we're one thing too on the, I don't know if you touched on discipline or not, but we did early on. And I think this was so good is we don't interrupt each other's disciplining. We wait until like, the, that way we look like a united front, even when the girls walk off or something like that. And I was like, why did you say that? You shouldn't have said, that. you know, oh, yeah. but we do it. That's yeah, the, we do it behind and that way they don't like, because kids are so stinking smart. Your kids are so smart. And they'll pick up, like, who to go ask. You know, can I spend the night with so-and-so? Don't ask mom. Ask dad. Because dad will always say yes or something like that. So if y'all start that united front on on just everything, it really, it it helps. A lot. So we say, go ask. I say, go ask dad. Dad says, go ask mom. So the kids are like, y'all both said go ask each other. Like, oh, okay, good. We'll talk to each other. <laughs> I don't know. I we're going to create a dialogue. <laughs> So, okay, so what, like, what do you, because I often wrestle with that question, and I bet there's somebody that is listening or will listen that asks this question is like, am I being too hard? You know, what, what is your measuring stick to answer, like, am I being too hard? My question is, am I being too soft? Because I think I'm probably the grace side. Mm-hmm. So that might be what the opposite question, like, oh, yeah, that's do I good. need to be harder on my kids sometimes? That's kind of me. I, I, this is kind of, and maybe it's the boy dad in me, but I think a lot of times most people don't, and this is this goes to adults, period. Mm-hmm. Like most of the time, people don't make adjustments in their life until they've lost something. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what I mean? So for me, like when it comes to disciplining Bradley, Julius just, there's no discipline. He's two months old, right? He just yeah. yells at me. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to like disciplining Bradley, it's like, okay, what, what, what's going to, make it feel like the, a loss that I mean I can give it back you know Bradley likes Beyblades so during the, the potty training thing one of the things we did was I, I told him listen don't judge me I didn't do it but I told him I threw his Beyblades in the trash I did and I hit him in our laundry room um, but you know but after but there for a long time and but I did make a deal I said listen if you go seven days Without an accident, I'll go buy you more Beyblades. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, he got to day four, and I was like, I mean, Alexis like talked, and I pulled the Beyblades out, and I gave them back to him. He's at day seven. I owe the dude a Beyblade. You know what I mean? So uh, for for me, I, that's what I've noticed is, like, most people won't make an adjustment until they've, like, or until they've lost something or they almost lost it, like, until it's almost gone. Mm-hmm. And that may be too hard for a four-year-old or a 47-month-old, but... <laughs> You know what I mean? We did. Um, and I've just started this probably within the last year. But I, I know I'm too hard. I know I am. And um, but and my kids have a completely different learning styles. And that's something parents need to realize is that just because your oldest does it one way, your second born may be completely a different. Like Emma, it, she, it just clicks. It just clicks. Ellie's dyslexic. I didn't realize that until they tested her at school. And then I felt like a big jerk because I was just like, why are you not getting this at first grade? Oh, that's why. And so, but I have told the girls, I'm like, I started this this year. I'm like, when I realize if I'm wrong, we've had a discussion, argument, whatever, I'm wrong. I go, it may take me an hour. It may take me a day, but I will come back and apologize. If, if I'm in, you know, if I'm in the wrong, but if I'm wrong and I've noticed it's stuff like I, I've jumped all over Ellie for something. And then I found out later that Dust had told her something else, and that's why it happened. And so I do go back and apologize. I think humility in parenting oh, is so such a big thing yeah. because you're fine. And, and I think it also depends on how you were raised. If you're a parent, like you were always the always in the wrong as a kid, when you get to be a parent, there's something in there that's like, I'm, I get to be right. Uh, you know, I, I always get to be right. My kid's always going to be wrong, but you've got to kind of break that. And so, and I had, a, I mean, I had a phenomenal childhood, like better than most anybody. And, um, but it's just like, it, but my kids parenting them is, is a lot, of, it's, it's a lot like it. And it's a lot different than, than how I was raised. And there's so much more technology wise that they have. But I do think being able to apologize to your kid is, is a, is a big thing. So I, don't know. I think that's great advice. I actually, 
if we're too big to apologize, then I think we'll lose them. Yeah. And and, and then actually we'll raise a we'll raise a, a prideful generation that won't that won't have the humility to apologize at the same time. I mean, the truth is, is none of us are perfect. You know, I mean, we make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes when they're when they're two months old. They're going to make mistakes when they're 20 years old. And y'all are going to have to remind me when Bradley's 20 to to be like Matt. Quit being a jerk. Go tell him you're sorry. You know, what I mean? he'll probably be taller than me then. But anyways, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, the, I think the truth is, is in this, I think that's a universal thing. It's like, we need to have the humility to say we're sorry when we're wrong. You're going to be wrong, you know. Now, I mean, Alexis had a similar situation like what you talked about, where I told him to do one thing, he did something else, she got mad at him, and I, and like, we had, we had a conversation, and she, and she, Alexis is always the, I love it, she's always the first to say, Bradley, listen, I'm sorry. Uh, and I was wrong, and I think one of the the coolest feelings uh, is Bradley will be like, "Mama, it's okay. I love you." Aww. You know what I mean? And you're like, ah. <laughs> you know, you're just like, and then you go, "We should have another one." No, like, that's no. what it is. That's no, what it is. not anymore. I love how Alexis talks to Bradley because, like, she parents like no one I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, like, Bradley will say something, and she will explain completely to him. Like, hey, this is why we have to wear this lap jacket. This is what will happen if we don't. And like little kids ask why. And it annoys parents, but that's how they learn mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is the whys. And I know like even as a fourth grade teacher, one of my coworkers was like, it doesn't matter why she said so. Cause I just yeah. answer their why, yeah. you know, and cause that's me. I, I always have why questions. And my husband was like, why are you asking me all these questions? And like, cause that's how I'm learning. Is, mm-hmm. I want to understand. Yeah, I want to understand how you do it, why you do it. and. So I love how Alexis just how she tells Bradley, she she's explaining to him and molding his mind and and he does what she says. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he says no, but then he still does it, you yeah. know. And that's what the Bible says: like it's better to say no and then still go do it than to say yes and not do it. Yeah. And like that's what sometimes as parents we have to, you know, like they like I know like Brayden we'd say go do the dishes <laughs> and he would like no. And then you would see him in five minutes run downstairs and do the dishes. <laughs> Landon will be like, go take out the trash. Okay. And then like two days later, I'm like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I know when you sleep. You, <laughs> you know? It's, yeah. So like, I just, but I just love how Alexis, just how she explains to Bradley, like why it's so important. What will happen? Like he is learning so much through her and her wisdom of how she parents. She, she, so. she's a lifesaver because I'm definitely the, because I said so. Go take yeah. out, go feed duck. Why? Because I said so. Instead of, because if you don't, she might die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? You you know, know, like, 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 running out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all this food. I have to wear a lap jacket uh, because duck might die. You just use that for yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, I mean, so, so becoming a parent has, I mean, just like, just from listening to you guys, like, I hear so many parallels with the Lord and like how he treats us and how we respond to him. Uh, so becoming a parent, do you feel like you're, the way you see God has changed or like your relationship with God has changed? Cause like, not that you're stepping into his shoes, not that you're the good creator of the world, but like you're, you're kind of in charge of this little human and I don't know, do you feel like your perspective on it has changed? God became so much more real. Like when you see a baby, not like being born, but, I'm not that. but cause I had a C-section and so I was, for one of them, I was knocked out, and for the next one, which also, if you see a pregnant mom, do not tell her your horror birth story. Yeah, please don't, don't real. do that. Don't do it. Do I've that. never done that. Hold on, this is a rabbit trail. Let's do <laughs> <don't do> it. <laughs> okay, but don't. But that's just like a that's a future parent right there. No, but for me, it's like how can you not believe in God when you have this baby? Like all the science yeah. behind it, all this stuff, and yeah. so that for me was just like. My path's been, I mean, I've always believed in God, but it's like, until it's like I really got to the church, it really got connected and stuff, it became, because at one point we followed Tori, because we were like, our children need to know, we've learned all we can, we can learn, our, our children, this is for our children, and we were so wrong about that, but man, when you hold that baby, you're just like, it, it just becomes more real how God is, and, and that he is a real thing, and it's not science and monkeys and all that it, it, all that stuff it just it, it just hits you real real big i i i I'll, so i'm going to talk from a different perspective because i think i like i do believe like i do see god in a whole different light but i also get become more thankful for god because there are times that parenting like to me feels super condemning 
um, where like I feel like I handled something really wrong mm -hmm. and it makes me thankful that God isn't like me mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I know that that's kind of a darker conversation yeah. but I think that there's times where like uh, I've gotten mad at Bradley and put Bradley down for a nap and I'm sitting there frustrated and I'm like God like how are you're a good father and I know you don't treat us like this and it, I mean it does it does cause you to go to that repentant place which I think is a is a good thing but it makes me super thankful that like that God is good even even though God disciplines we need to understand that that God does discipline because he is a good father um, God is good you know what I mean and handles even things differently than we would you know um, like I love how like everyone's like like he's a mini me or something like that and then people will look at Brayden and they're like well I don't know but Brayden's picture is like a copy of Luke's grandpa grandpa Durst um, Claude Durst we have, like he had his hair cut a certain way and they like just look identical mm -hmm. and he looks Brayden also looks like a lot like my dad and Landon to me looks just like Luke and so what I love about that is like the Bible says we're made in God's image oh yeah and so like he's just showing us over and over like you're made in your your father's image you're made in your father's image and so I love that because I look at my kids and it's a reminder just creation is such a reminder even humans of God and who he is and um, and like that unconditional love, like, you know, we talk about the father's unconditional love. Like I remember when they put Brayden in arms and I was 17. So my first thought was like, they left the room and I was like, you just left the baby <laughs> <laughs> I was like, with me. You know? I was like, this lady's crazy. She should come back and get him, you know, <laughs> but it's like, you love them so much. And then like, when you're, I don't know about you, but whenever I was pregnant with Landon, I was like, Am I gonna be able to love him as yes. much as I love Brayden? Like really? That yes. Love. Like you have yeah. a fear. Like I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna love him. It's so much love. You yeah. can't. Yeah. How can you? How can your heart? You, Emma is so much in my heart. How can yeah. I ever love Ellie as much as I love Emma? And then you have Ellie, and you. Yeah. And it, I mean, so it's, I've never it's, done that before. You you think it like how can I love this second one? How can I love this third one? How can I love this sixth one yeah. as much? And you do Six. every time. Right. Okay, so <laughs> by, by the third time, like when they put Lexi on you and you just had Lexi, like is it the same emotions or is it a whole different story? Like what is like was it a different experience with every child after they were born and they like? Handed I mean, you the thought is different. The thought was like, okay, please take Lexi so I can sleep. Because, <laughs> like, because I'm gonna have to go home. Yeah. <laughs> I won't be able to sleep. We left Julius. So the like, yeah, we you can't take the baby to the nursery. We, oh. kept, we kept Emma with us the whole entire yes, time, we and did. with Ellie, we had this the season finale of a TV show we were watching. And we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't have the DVR or any of that stuff, and we knew it was going to be playing because I'd scheduled C-sections, and so I like fed Ellie, and then Dust took her to the nursery, and then we sat down. Well, I laid down, and he sat here. But we we watched the season finale of our TV show, and it was just like you get it. It's like yeah. after each kid, you you kind of you you fall a little bit because no kid is alive, but you just you pick up more things and you pick up more things, and it, it gets it gets easier like the very first part. But I mean, I think after everything they start sleeping. Like, yes, yeah. and that's where it's the everything is a season. Like yeah. diapers is two years of your life, hopefully. And then that's it. <laughs> kind of reflecting on like what you said and like taking it back to what God, like the, the parallel, you know, the conversation I had with my dad when Julius was in the nursery, that, 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 that night that he was born was, Dad, how do you how do you know how much time to give each one? Mm -hmm. And, you know, paralleling that with God, God knows exactly how much time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and I think that was the biggest question for me. It's like, man, you know, Bradley, uh, we said this last night, we saw some friends. I was like, Bradley is like the equivalent of the Autobahn, like runs at a million miles per hour. And I said, I pray Julius is like a school zone. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like as far as speed. But the truth is, it's like, you know, uh, when you go from having one kid and, and spending all of your time and all of your energy chasing them and all this other one, and all of a sudden you've got another one and you're like, how do I, how do I split it? Because you know, one of the things I feel like a, jo a father's job is to is to bring validation. You know what I mean? So how do I validate him while also validating him, knowing that the personalities, the preferences are way different. You know what I mean? And then thinking about God, God does that with each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that that's the God parallel that I see kind of in parenting. Mm -hmm. So uh, what were, like when once you became a parent and everything, what were some realities that you saw? That you're like, this is not what I thought. Like good or bad. Like well, like this is what I thought it was. And then you had a kid, you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is my, not what I thought at all. 
I was ticked one night. I thought I've shared this on a Sunday. Bradley wouldn't go to sleep. Every time he clicked his binky, I wanted to rip it out and throw it up against the wall. Yeah, like so I was super pumped because I was like, okay, I know what it's like to say I'm a son of God. Now I'm gonna know what it's like to look at a son through the eyes of a father. Right? So that night I was super ticked because he wouldn't go to sleep. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm tired. I gotta go like I boxing class that next morning. And uh, I'm you know, swallowing Bradley. Finally get him to bed and I tell guys like, listen. I'm upset. This isn't what I thought it was. The exact words. It was like, because, you know, uh, he doesn't got to feed himself. I feed him. He doesn't got to you know, find shelter. I provide that. And he doesn't even got to clean himself when he makes a mess. I do all of that too with latex gloves. You know what I mean? Right. But in, in this, what God taught me was that he's like, well, you do all those same things too. And I and I feed you. I provide for you. And I, clean, I cleaned up your mess. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Three o'clock revelation. You know, what I mean? just like, but you know, this it's. I think I think parenting can be often like newlyweds. Like you have this kind of fairy tale version of what it's going to look like. You know, oh yeah, we're going to live our life on the beach. We're going to do all this, and then there's the there's the nights where they where they won't go to sleep because they've got the hiccups. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or or they're upset because they you know gas in their belly or you know what I mean. There's so many fairy tale visions of what parenting is, but I think it's it's loving them and figuring out the stuff in the hard part that really grows us together. And then seeing that, hey, I'm screaming, but you're still here. Mm-hmm. You know? That's good. That's really good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is, uh, and I'm more funny. Like y'all are, y'all are super spiritual and and all this stuff. And I had my it, it's a spiritual, but I'm just super funny. And mine is honestly, it's losing the baby weight. Like there's so, you see that and like in, in magazines and I didn't have internet. I don't really think when I had babies. Yeah, well, oh, we, did, we had that book. Remember you looked in the book. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I didn't have texting, but we didn't have Facebook. I'm very thankful that we didn't have Facebook because, um, but losing the baby weight. I mean, it took me 13 years to lose the baby weight. And so, but it, it's just that how other people uh, like other women, how they look after having a baby is not necessarily what's going to happen to you. Or your parenting is not necessarily what's going to happen to you. And you just have to, I don't, I don't know, just trust God, trust you with, with having this baby and raising this baby. And God didn't trust you with having, you know, me having uh, Bradley or me having Lexi. God trusted me with him and Ellie. And so that was my, that was the misconception though. It was that losing the weight because I gained dust between dust and me. I outweighed him by a hundred pounds, and that was that was tough because it, I couldn't I I couldn't quit gaining weight, and I didn't know why. I was also eating for two like literally two adults, and that probably was the problem. But no, but I mean, it's just all these things that you hear and all these people that you see. That's not your story. That's that's not what's going to happen to you. So if you still have the baby weight, it is okay. If you if, if you don't look like your neighbor who had a baby and, and lost even more weight, that's okay. It really is. Yeah. I have a friend from back home and she just had a baby not too long ago, like maybe it's probably one or so right now. And that's something, that's one of my, I just, maybe it sounds really shallow, but it is it's one of my fears of like having a baby is like, I work so hard to be healthy. Yeah. Like, am I going to have a baby? And it's just like, and your it's body, over. the woman's body. I, I weigh less than I do now than when I got married. I still can't fit in my wedding dress because Your my body, my body like my hips got white and I had a C-section. I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. I didn't have my hips, but, but your body just so much changes. And so you really have to think about like, I mean, burn it into your brain, but it's like, I, I had a baby. God, I, I, my body went through all these changes and, and it was worth it for this. And I can't be focused on that. Mm-hmm. And so yeah it's but that's that was a hard one for me so what my friend said that i thought was really cool because I, I really do i can listen really closely to what y'all are saying so i can like put it in my pocket and then when i have a baby i'll be like okay this is what we do i know what to do when my baby is 47 months old <laughs> but she said like you know when you're when you're having your baby and you know, your belly's growing everyone's so excited and they're so excited that you're growing and then the second that the baby's out they're like oh okay so like when are, when are you going to get back? And it's like, okay, my body just did like yeah. this amazing thing and like went through all of this. And it's like, she's saying like, just the hardest part is just giving yourself grace to get back into it. Like, I did not know that it took 
like months for that that bump to go down. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, um, I follow a lot of fitness people on my social media, and someone did like a reality of like how long yeah. like it really takes for that, and it was like. 13 Six years. months, but she still had like 13 years. Experience. And I was like, oh, I did not know that. Well, if it takes, you know, it's really so 10 long months. If it takes, you know, 40 weeks is like 10 months. If it takes 10 months to go out, it should take, yeah. you have 10 to, to like, back. you have to think like that. But it's horrible. Like, I went to Thriftway and some lady was like, when are you having the baby? And I was like, oh, I'm having the baby. <laughs> That's what my friend said. She's like, so bring the baby with you always. I like, <laughs> It's out. Yeah, we're like Jamie part of this discussion. So, uh, hey, real quick, so it's, we've gone for a little bit. Let's go one quick tip, one quick uh, piece of advice, or one quick like exciting memory that you have with you and your kids. Uh, ours was we before I started working here. It was the summer bucket list, and it was like I was for, I was Pinterest before Pinterest was even there, but I wanted to just. And it wasn't to outdo any moms or, or any of that stuff. It was just like, I wanted my kids to have a fun summer. So it's like, we set a goal of like five things we were going to do. And we always did the colored hair. And that was that was the funny story is the blue hair that would not go yeah. away. That was supposed to be out in six to eight washes. And it was 68 washes. And so always have. Did you read it right? Yes. No, this but is- it just, our, our hair loves color. But man, it just, it's like. You have one thing um, my neighbor told me is you have, I forget how many, you have 52 Saturdays. Uh, um, what is it, 52 Saturdays? Or I, I don't know the number, but it's like, that's in one year. Okay, times that by 18. And that's how many Saturdays you have with your child. And it goes, so oh, bad. it goes. So like I see Ju- uh, Ju- Ju- Julius, I see him and I see Emma and I'm like, I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah. And it goes, you don't say that. And our, my neighbor had told me that like three years ago when her son had graduated or four years ago. And we're at that point, like we're going on a campus tour this Friday and it just goes by so fast. So it's like, make the, those those memories, man, those are more important than than t-shirts, than Beyblades, but, but all that stuff, man, those memories are gonna stay with you for so long, but you only have that. So whatever 18, somebody do 18 times 52. But whatever that is, that's how many <laughs> brain tech. Our tech guy has given us some numbers. What is it? 936. 936. 936. Thank you, Brayden. Uh, but yeah, 936 days. And it seems like so long, but oh, it's not. It's yeah. really not. So man, make make those make those Saturdays, make those summers, do that. One of my favorite memories. So Ephesians says, imitate God as dear children. You know what I mean? Um, so Brad, when, if you know me, like I've done a couple bodybuilding competitions and this last year, Brad, was really, um, active or participant or inspiring by my practicing posing with me. So one day, uh, you guys were over playing guitar hero and Bradley just walks in with a shirt off and starts hitting bodybuilding poses and like, make sure he hits them all. And, and we're just like checking it out. But like, for me, that was so inspiring because, uh, there are times like you know, we talked about where you're like, man, I wish I'd have handled that differently. But then there's other times where they imitate the best parts of you. Mm-hmm. And those are some of the most exciting memories. Yeah. My favorite memories were um, we bought like a little hobby. It's like a toy color RV thing. And we did enduro. It's like where you, it's not like high speed, but like long distance um, on dirt bikes. And Lexi was a baby and I had her like in the front. And Landon even had a little four-wheeler, and Braden had his little motorcycle, and Luke would race. And we would all just be in this tiny little camper together. Mm-hmm. And I think back sometimes, I'm like, I wish we could go back to the camper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The camping, camping is it's so good. Yeah, it's, I know y'all love it. Yeah, um, we absolutely love it. There's just nothing like, you know, there, we didn't have a TV in there. It was a long time ago. And no internet, no phones. Everybody was on. And it was just simple, and um, it was pretty awesome. So. So Naomi, since you don't have kids yet, yeah. what biggest takeaway? What was the biggest takeaway? Oh, you I don't know. I think oh. like the... That was my chair. I don't know. The biggest, I mean, I just got a lot is kind of like trying to take a sip from a fire hydrant. Like, I don't know. Oh, that's good. But uh, I don't know. I'm sure I'll think back later and like, um, there's something Stephanie said. I don't remember. You kind of caught me on the spot. I don't know. Yeah. There was a lot. Y'all said a lot.
lot of good stuff. Okay, I didn't know. That totally surprised me when y'all were like, you don't know if you will love them as mm -hmm. much. And so now whenever I have that, I'll know like, okay, like I will. And I know to give them the baby to the nursery. So yeah, that's yeah. Like, your season. Take, like, your, take yeah. the sleep. Oh, and it's a season. Everything's a season. I won't want to kill Dawson when we're going through the checkout in Walmart. <laughs> like, it'll, don't I'll just want to kill him for just a have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, so that's, uh, man, we hope that that was life for you and, and really we really like the opportunity just to have a real conversation and, and, and uh, do it where you guys can see maybe learn if you've got questions or about anything post those down in the chat we'd love to get back to those and if we don't know we'll just be completely honest and say we don't know the truth is is none of us or anybody else in the world really has parenting 100% figured out so if you're in that boat just or you feel that way just understand hey you're not alone you're not alone in that um, another thing is uh, if there's another topic uh, that you think that you would love for us to, to dialogue about, uh, post that down in the chat. Send us a message. I think this was a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? I know the Bible study every Wednesday is a whole lot of fun. I could see us doing like the Bible study on Wednesdays and maybe something like this every other Thursday or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. to change it up. I'm not, don't hold me to that. It's just brainstorming. I throw it out there. But, hey, that's Wednesday Bible study. Uh, we love you guys. We hope to see you this Sunday. If you don't have a home church, come join us. If you do have a home church, go serve uh, right where you are. Go make a difference right where you are. Um, the whole reason that we do this is we want to grow together right where we are. We hope you have an amazing week. Well, hey, that is our Wednesday Bible study. We just want to thank you so much again for joining us. And if you want to join us every week, if you'll click subscribe, this podcast will pop up right there for you. Again, we want to do this to grow together right where we are.